I'm trying to figure out who's out here teaching that black women should not be held responsible or accountable for their actions. Who's out here teaching that? There is a lot of talk in the black community, the so-called black community about accountability for the women. Um, everyone is out here saying what women should be doing, what women shouldn't be doing, uh, what choices they should and shouldn't be making, and that black women are not being held accountable for choices that they make. And that nobody is out here talking about accountability for black women. I'm trying to figure out what's going on and, and what are people talking about because there are so many people um, who have been taking direct aim at the black woman for a long time. We're talking decades, if not longer. <laughs> okay, so I'm talking about recent history. Um, I, don't, I don't know what people are talking about when they say black women are not being held accountable for their actions. Let me tell you what's really going on here. Uh, there's this thing called deflection. The art of deflection is so very tricky that if you don't pay attention, you will be deceived by the art of deflection. Usually when people are talking about black women are not being held accountable for their actions and their choices and decisions, it's because a point was brought up about someone else, okay, or another group. And so to deflect off of the... Uh, harsh realities of these other groups and things that these other groups are involved in, uh, you have to redirect the conversation or the thought to the black woman and her accountability. Now, let me just go ahead and say it. I'm talking about black men. Whenever black women bring up any point about black men, whether it's some horrendous crime that's been committed uh, whether there's a lacking of leadership in the black community by black males or whether there are a lack of fathers in the home. All of the accountability is shifted to the black woman, okay? Let's talk about the single parent households, okay? Everyone loves to throw out the numbers between 70 and 85% of black homes are ran by single parents, single mothers, right? But no one wants to talk about who fathered these children. It seems as if all of the accountability is shifted to the black woman. Now, no one is saying that she should not be held responsible for her part in that. Because black women, you have a duty to say no. You have a duty to not give your body to all of these different men that are producing these children. We understand mistakes have been made and um, everyone has a past. We get all of that. But when you continue to repeat cycles over and over and over again, you have those who won't look in the mirror trying to justify their points or their actions against you. Now, notice I said they won't look in the mirror though because on the other side of that single mother is a father who is missing in action in some cases. Of course, let me go ahead and say this for all of those who say no one ever talks about what the black woman does. Of course, you always have situations or scenarios where you have a black woman who has a man um, who does want to be in his child's life, taking care of his child or his children, and she is playing silly games with the children. You have cases such as that where you have women who are out of control. You see... So many people have rebuked black women over the years. That ain't even funny. So when I hear people say that nobody rebukes black women, that no one holds, holds black women accountable, no one talks about the deeds of the black woman, I'm saying to myself, what kind of, what planet are they living on? Some people, that's the whole focus of their channel is to point out all of the fallacies or the faults of the black woman. That's what some people's channels are dedicated to. And it's not even just about uh, the mistakes that you make in your life. You have people who are literally insulting you and putting you down for the way you look, for the color of your skin. You have women out here who don't even have children and they may be considered dark skinned 
and they are ridiculed by their own black men for the color of their skin. So don't feed me that stuff about no one is holding black women accountable. The problem is those who are supposed to be the head, the leaders, the rulers in the black community, hmm, are creating many of the problems in the black community because of failed leadership. And that failed leadership is a direct result of a failure to honor their own head, which is the creator. Those religious men that I'm speaking of, they have this whole thing where they are just talking about the black woman, her accountability, the problems in the black community, falling all on her. They've laid all the charges or the majority of the charges on her, even, with, even down to choosing the wrong man to father her children. No accountability for the man, but she chose the wrong one. Well, guess what? I agree with that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give them that when I agree with that. But when you are talking about someone who has brought a child into this world and you lay all of the charge on the woman for letting that man inside, you are not being fair. It kind of reminds me of all of those men who brought the woman and said, this woman has been caught in adultery. So how do you catch someone in adultery? That means they are performing a sexual act, right? Hmm. Hmm. Pay attention, y'all. They are performing a sexual act. This is how they were caught in adultery. But these men, these religious men, they brought her and said she was caught in in adultery they didn't bring the man because <laughs> you know how we say where there's a whore there's a whoremonger it was two people involved in that right but the man only brought the woman we see the same thing playing out today the same thing playing out today where the men want to highlight all of the issues with the woman in which the woman does need to get herself together. Black women, you have a lot of changes to make, a lot to repent for, a lot to turn away from. But for the men to make the woman the biggest and the worst problem in the black community, that's very sad indeed. The woman wasn't appointed as the head. The woman was not supposed to be the head. She is not meant to be the head. She wasn't given that position. But for men to lay the majority of the charge on the black woman for all that ails the black community, it kind of reminds me of what happens with racism. How so many horrendous things were have happened to black people in this country and around the world. But the minute you start to talk about racism and who did what to whom, all of a sudden, these people get so enraged and angry that you're even talking about it. How dare you bring this up? This is your fault. That's your fault. The same thing happens when black women point out things that have happened to them, to their children, to the black community at the hands of black men. Some black men. You know I'm not talking about all. You know I'm not. I'm talking about those whom the shoe fits. Right, But the minute black women get to talking about the, the, uh, the verbal abuse, the physical abuse, the lack of love, the lack of protection, the lack of care, the lack of accountability in the men, mm, mm, mm. the lack of leadership, the lack of headship, the lack of authority, the lack of rulership, some of those mean the same thing. I'm just trying to drive home a point here. But the minute black women get to talking about that kind of stuff, and I'm talking about those who talk about it without disrespecting the black man, okay? All of a sudden, all of this deflection, you're just met with deflection. Highlighting all of the problems of black women. Now, I do not endorse when black women call black men out of their names, whether it's out of hurt or whatever, right? You know, the term dusty and all of this kind of stuff, is, you know, I, I don't endorse that kind of stuff. I don't like that kind of stuff because I don't feel that it's necessary. But 
for men to pretend like that is such a horrible thing to be called a, a black dusty when they call women all kinds of things. They call them women the B word when it's not warranted. They're calling them Jezebels and talking about they got the spirit of Sammy Ramis and um, calling them all kinds of just horrible things. And they want to highlight the, the word dusty like it's the equivalent of the B word. On either side, I think it. I think you need to stop on both sides. Tell it like it is. Speak, speak it like it is. Talk about what has happened to you or how your life has been affected or changed by something. But the, the dusty and the B word and all that stuff, that's where it gets really messy. But I wanted to make a point that so-called black men, you are the heads. You are the leaders. You're supposed to be raising the next generation to be the same, to be real and true honorable heads of the community and of your families, of your households. But when you fail to identify your problems as the head and don't hold yourself accountable, because the Bible does, the Most High holds the charge on the male. He talks about what the daughters of Zion do, how they're haughty and uh, the curses that, that are going to fall on them because of that haughtiness. But he also talks about the problems with the head because the head is out of order. The whole body is out of order. That out of order spirit was brought on by the head. There's evidence of that throughout scripture. This is why in Jeremiah, it tells the daughters of Zion that we need to weep, wail, and moan for our men because they are dying in slaughter because of their sins and their wickedness. So we have been mandated, the women, black women, wives, sisters, mothers, daughters, nieces, aunts, cousins, we have been mandated by the Most High, our Creator, to pray for our men. But how can we have an effectual, fervent prayer that's in righteousness if we are allowing ourselves to spiral downward out of control with the men? I said with the men because the men would like to say or pretend that it all started with the women in the black community, um, robbing, shooting. I, listen, listen, y'all. I heard a, a brother say years ago that 97% or 90 something percent of the crimes in the black community are committed by black women. Mm, mm, mm. I said, this person is delusional. 90 something percent. Are you kidding me? Now, that's not to say that black women aren't committing crimes too, but to hear a man try to make that statement, try to claim that the black woman is guilty of the majority of the crimes in the black community, I'm, I'm tripping out over that one. No accountability. So let me go on record to say this. Black men and black women need to be held accountable for their individual actions. But don't try to shift the majority of the blame to the weaker vessel when the charge to lead and to head was given to you as a man. You know, a lot of black men often talk about how black women are the ones raising these children in the community. Um, can we argue with that? No, we cannot. But when you, when you refuse to look at the other side, and the other side being that these women are raising these children by themselves because that man dropped his seed and kept it moving, when you fail to look at that part of it, you are a huge part of the problem. Yes, these women are raising these children. And yes, a lot of charge does fall on the black woman for allowing her sons and her daughters to run amok. That's why the scripture says, and menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. So there are women raising monsters out here because they have failed leadership. No one to head them. No one to lead and guide them. And so many of them have failed 
parental skills, many, okay? And so that is not to exonerate the men who fathered those children. That's the, that's the part that we see happening. We talk about the woman raising these children by herself to be a certain way, but you exonerate the man who dropped his seed. If you ain't gonna be there in a person's life, you keep your seed to yourself. There is a duty that everyone has, right? Mothers, since the charge is being laid on you, black women, since the charge is being laid on you by some black men, you know what you need to start doing? Put a lock on it. Don't even give them the opportunity to impregnate you. Don't get caught up in the trap and snare of trying to get in the system to get an income for children because those children need to be taken care of and loved. Don't look at them as a dollar bill or a, a, a way out of, out, out of poverty. That's actually aiding you in poverty because you're not going to get enough to take care of that child. Listen, black men, black women, this nonsense that we show to the world is just, is beyond out of control. And as I look and I see black men and black women who can't look in the mirror and examine their own selves, I think it's very pathetic when you can't look at your own self and make that determination that you got a lot that needs to be fixed, whether you're a man or a woman. But it's even more pathetic when you have men who cannot accept their responsibility in something. And they constantly talking about the daughters of Zion need to fix, be fixed, and that they need to be addressed and dealt with. These same men don't have that same energy when it comes to the foolishness happening in the black community. Now, let me say something about the women real quick. Since the charge is being laid on you, this is what I meant to say. As it relates to raising your sons and your daughters. Y'all black women, you better start teaching your sons how to be respectful while they're under your roof. Because they go out here in the world and they show this disrespect in the world. When they show this disrespect, the world is not going to put up with what you put up with at home. You have got to lay down the law in your house if you are a single mother. Whether it's your sons or your daughters, lay down the law. Don't let them run over you. Don't let them control you. Don't let them talk back to you and sass you because when they get out here in the world and do it, you see what the world will do to black children. They don't want, they don't want to hear nothing. They're not going to have any kind of mercy. And so when you're at home, rewarding them for every bad deed you know they out here acting up doing things they ain't got no business you won't say anything you won't do anything you just reward them buying them phones video games giving them money get, getting them whatever clothes they want whatever name brands and you can't even afford it you definitely are part of the problem definitely but that does not exonerate the man who fathered that child just because you're not around in that child's life doesn't mean you are exonerated. The Most High holds you, holds the charge against you as well. Scripture says, a man who don't take care of his children is worse than an infidel. So you can say, oh, the mother this, the mother that, all you want. Me and her don't get along. There are cases where the woman gives a man problems with seeing his children. There are cases that exists like that. But let's be real here. Most of the situations that exist with absent fathers are men who didn't even have a real relationship with a woman. You slept with her, got her pregnant, she had a baby and you walked away. So don't sit up here and try to pretend that most of these situations are men who really do want to be in their children's lives, but she just won't let me. We got to start being honest with ourselves. If we ever want to fix this mess that we are in, we have got to be honest with ourselves. And you so-called black women, you see the track record that has been laid by your mothers, your grandmothers, your great-grandmothers. Why do you keep falling in the same footsteps? You hear the rhetoric coming out of the mouths of men who have shown their disdain and hatred towards you. So why do you keep giving them the opportunities 
to be proven right. Say no. Change and fix you. You repent. Don't worry about what the men do. We can't change them. Let them deal with the most high. You just get yourself together. All of the excuses that we, we see and we hear about upbringing, about not knowing any better. A lot of the time when people say they don't know any better, that's a bunch of hogwash when you say you didn't know any better. There are a lot of things that people know at a very young age and then when they fall into situations that are embarrassing or stressful or hurtful or painful, bad relationships, then they want to say they didn't know any better or someone took advantage of them or this, that, and the third. Black men, black women, you got to start keeping it real with your own self. You have to look at the man or the woman in the mirror because as long as black women are looking at black men pointing, I mean, there may be problems that exist. No one says that they don't exist, right? No one is saying that. But instead of trying to get the men to change and do right by you, work on you. Work on you. They're going to have to deal with their own issues. The Most High is going to see to it. Just like he sees to it that the daughters of Zion who are haughty with their heads, lifted up and clanking their heels as they walk. Just like the Most High is making sure that the daughters of Zion are reaping what they've sown. Look out here. Seven women to one man. This is because men are dying at a, a higher rate than women and fewer are being born. The judgments of the Most High are very clear. They're out here. They are out here. But we've got to be real. In our communities, we have got to be real. Right? And if the men are going to keep on laying the charge on you, black women, daughters of Zion, if they're going to keep on laying the charge on you, this is what I say do. I say accept the charges. Accept the charges. Since they want to say that everything is our fault, accept that. But then, see, now they've put you all the way on the bottom. And so from there, you just continue to rise to the top to where they can no longer... When I say rise, I'm talking about change. Every little bit helps. Every little bit helps. Just imagine if every last black woman said, you know, I'm going to stop right here in my tracks. I'm going to examine what the brothers have said. They said this, that, and the other about us. I'm going to stop right here in my tracks, and I'm going to change my ways completely. So they can no longer lay this at my charge, that at my charge. They can't blame me for this. They can't blame me for that because I have changed. So then what will be their excuse then if all of the women change? If all of the women change, you will begin to see, it will bubble to the surface what the real problem is, what the real issues are. See, well, let me just deal with the issue of black or dark women dark-skinned women there has to be a narrative created to make you think that black women are loud they're out of control they're bossy they're disobedient they're not submissive they're this they're that they're ghetto and blah 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 everything that you can name they have the spirit of jezebel and all of this and all of that right to justify going to foreign women or women of other nations so when you get all of that off the table and you can no longer be accused of all of those things because you've changed and you've repented, you will then see that their fixation on these foreign women had nothing to do with you at all. It has something to do with the spirit of lust and desire in them. And see, they can no longer blame it, blame you for it because you've repented. The crimes, other things that have been laid at your charge, black woman, Let's just say you stop right here from this day, from this moment forward, anyone giving birth to a black child, I'm talking about a black mother, you raise that child to the best and beyond the best of your ability. No longer can it be laid at your charge. All that, all that ails the black community if we work on us, and I've said this before, y'all, and from time to time, I like to encourage the daughters of Zion because so much is laid at your charge. There are things 
that a lot of black women engage in. They are actually following after the pattern of the heathen women that some black men lust after. But that is not an excuse for you. When you made the decision to say, you know what, I'm going to stop being in that missionary position and I'm going to be a super freak. That's when it became your fault. When you decided that you were going to stoop that low just to get and win a man's heart. Don't ever allow a man to cause you to stoop that low just to win his heart. Now you have gurus out here telling black women that they need to sleep with this one and sleep with that one to test the waters. And you have our men, so-called righteous men, praising such rhetoric. When you praise a person who teaches those kind of things and you liken yourself to be like that man and you're not considering what he is teaching, what he is telling people, what he is endorsing, and you call yourself a religious or a righteous man, let's ask the Most High. Would the Most High say the same thing that you said or feel the same way that you feel about these men? Would the Most High feel the same way? That's what you got to ask yourself. Would Yahuwah say that this man is the voice of truth in this day? Would the Most High ask yourself this? Now, listen. We know the black woman have problems. You all have made sure we've known that for a long time. But you can't talk about the problems that the black woman have without talking it first. Without talking first about the problems with the head being out of order. And not following his own head. So let me ask this question again. For you deflectors. Those of you who don't have a righteousness that you live by. Those of you who are self-righteous, religious, really don't truly honor the Father. You really don't truly follow the Torah. You really don't truly love your brothers and sisters. You are a person that is religious in nature, but foul in spirit. You wouldn't know that though, because you won't look at the person in the mirror. But let me ask the question again. These men that you endorse as the modern day truth for the black community, for black men, for black women, would the most high, our creator, the creator of heaven and earth, give that same endorsement that you just gave? I want to know what your thoughts are in the comment section. Leave them below. Leave your thoughts below. I would appreciate it also if you would share this video. This is a very important message that needs to be heard by the daughters of Zion who are wayward and those who are on their way to being wayward. It's also a very important message to our brothers who want to do what's right but are confused by all of the rhetoric that you see out here, right? And this is also for those, I'm gonna say, those mothers who find yourself in the position of being a single mother. You have a choice to make. Raise your children in righteousness or you will be raising the next hell on wheels. I'm out.